just, you know, you, you've gone to so many different job functions across engineering, maintenance, asset management. What inspired you to transition into asset management? It seems like stay here and stay there for what seems like the, the long-term <laughs> future for you. <laughs> I, I gotta say asset management is feeling pretty good. Uh, one of the things that it that it did for me was uh, also allow me to utilize like all of my experiences across different uh, departments and different industries. So that's been a good thing. But in terms of what inspired me, I it's just I started to develop that discontent with respect to, you know, all these departments are working on the same assets just at different life cycles, at different parts of the life cycle. So if you think about engineering, um, buying the assets and, and designing and, and so on, they're at the beginning. But if they don't collaborate with maintenance and operations to get feedback on similar type assets, what information that they need to operate the assets properly, then what eventually happens, which I've seen in so many companies, is that the assets are bought or built and thrown over the fence to operations and maintenance, who then, have, and usually a poor planner, I'm sorry for the planner, is stuck with this role of trying to uh, take pictures of all the nameplates to get the information to start to build the asset registry years after the asset has been in service. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen it so many times. It, it, you, you would think that it is rare. You think with all the gains that we've made in maintenance management that these things don't happen, but they happen still so regularly. And it's largely because engineering does not have a business process to involve maintenance and operations in, in, in the acquisition process, for example, mm -hmm. in the design process. And these processes are out there, they're standardized. Some companies do them well, but a lot of companies, these are all segregated departments. So when I started to look, look at this and, and, and just imagine, this is well known, but I, I discovered this through, through a, you know, processes of, of failure that you can't change uh, certain things about the inherent reliability of the asset without re-entering the design phase, which is, which is expensive for a company. And so through my processes of failure and, and, and understanding equipment on the plant, then I, I realized that, yes, there is, there is another way. And I literally started to read and read and read. And I have to credit uh, a general manager that I had back in the day that said, you know, you should really check out past 55 at the time there was no ISO 55,000 mm -hmm. and started to look at it and my eyes went boom. And then ISO 55,000 was, was, was released, but there was a good few years of contemplation before that. And it was being talked about. And I just got so excited about it. You'll, you'll see how excited I get about standards. Like on LinkedIn, I, I write about them. Like it's like a night, nice plate of ribs or something <laughs> but I got like really really excited that people had figured out that all of this thing can work together and all of these different departments can functionally work together across the life cycle of the assets to, to, to deliver value and that's how I got into asset management.